Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the online course on the entrepreneurial mindset. We'll be talking and uh, studying a very interesting case, John the Inventor and the Cardboard Snowplow. Uh, this case is used to explain the entrepreneurial and effectual marketing practices and how can we uh, design a product which is relevant to the customer, how to price it, how to promote it, how to sell it, and how to approach people. Uh, so this is a very interesting case and the story starts from the protagonist John who's standing inside the window and looking outside and along with his wife. It's early in the morning and uh, he is wishing that the snow falls a bit further because it's difficult for him to go out and remove snow and so he feels a bit lazy due to the cold weather and uh, and, and they're just expecting that and they get a weather forecast that the snow is going to fall further and it will be a, a day off for him. Uh, so the question which arises later on in this case is what options shall he take? Um, one option is to what shall he do in future to remove snow? Uh, shall he uh, go and use shovels? They're costing forty dollars, and these shovels are, 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 are you have to go and purchase from the new neighborhood store. Uh, but once again, you have to go out and face the cold and the wind. Other option is to invite a pickup truck, which charges $150 for the pop-up, and snowblower, which charges costs is $250 to $50. So with this background and this question, let's move into his history. John uh, was raised as a person who loves adventure, experimentation, and he likes science. And while he was young, he used to have a they make some uh, slingshots and used to me throw ice balls in other places and he loved those experiments and after he enrolled in his PhD he did a lot of research in spark chamber experiments and eventually he joined IBM as senior manager got involved in technical R&D projects and he developed software to model 3D items and due to his uh, interesting nature uh, the whole family calls him Caractacus. Caractacus, Caractacus, Caractacus is a character uh, which was uh, famous in, in the kids' movies in the 1970s called Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. And this is an interesting movie in which there's a flying car. The car can also float on water and it can be used on the streets. So three in one. So the inventor and the kids do experiments and out of those experiments they find new things. So the same thing John is doing with his kids. He has made a, a, a kitchen table. He has made a kitchen table which is he has made a kitchen table which is foldable. It can be used as a as a kids changing station and once you are free you just fold it down it becomes a table. He has made a blackboard which can be converted to a toy train layout. He has developed a cantilever arc for his daughter and people used to prank and ring his bell. So he developed a camera operated with a string. So he put the camera outside over the door and uh, there's a string is attached which is brought to his bedroom and the moment he listens he pushes and pulls the str string and he gets the photograph. And uh, another experiment which he had been doing was the problem which he faced was the, the grass growing in his backyard. And as he looks at the backyard, he thinks about various ways. Use of chemical, which he doesn't find good. Lasers, which he couldn't do to find a laser technology to cut the upper portion of the grass. And then it came up with, and he thought about an indigenous solution. Why don't raise sheep? And they keep on grazing. So he is uh, famous for his out-of-box thinking and experiments. So as he and his wife are reflecting and looking outside the window, the wife says, hey, why don't you do some experiment on snow plowing and removing snow? So this question, uh, you see, arises further thoughts. And after some days, he starts thinking and reflecting and he finds a bird in hand. He has two cars in his garage and they are like few horsepower with him. So he comes up with an idea, why don't I attach a snowplow? A snowplow can be attached, but then he further reflects on it and finds that if the metallic snowplow is 
he strikes with something hard on the road, uh, the aftershocks and the after effects will go down to the body. So the car body will get damaged because they will not have that strength to face this pressure. Then he starts thinking about wood. But again, wood has, wood is, uh, you see, has a very high compressive strength and it will do the same thing. And then he comes up with an idea of corrugated sheets. So corrugated sheets are sheets which are given this shape. Then you have one straight uh, sheet on the top and bottom and you pile up and you reinforce the power and you can use these sheets for reasonable strength. So he comes up with that idea. Uh, he starts making a, he starts thinking of making a, a prototype. And before making that, he is a CAD designer. He goes to mathematics and designing. And using the CAD techniques, he finds an ideal mix that the size of the, car, of, of the snow plow, the cardboard thickness, 3 by 8 inch, the optimal shape, and the angle of plow. So based on that uh, uh, information, he makes his first prototype, a full-size prototype, and he couldn't test it in summer, but he finds out it's too flimsy, it's difficult to, it, 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 it keeps on, it is difficult to keep it intact, it's too big to transport, difficult to to assemble there a few pieces and the, the flat sur rear surface. So the car is, is flat so uh, in many cases the surface, the, the rear surface of this is flat but the cars are in many ways semi-circular. So this leads him to reflect and he comes up with a second prototype. He tries to address those issues and design with small boxes and here he gets an idea from the matryoshka nesting dolls. The Russian doll, the doll within a doll, and within a doll there's another doll. So you see this is the way of assembling and storing dolls. So getting that idea, he makes boxes which could be nested from within, nested with each other. And these are four components which can be nested together and placed uh, on the automobile. In packaged form and here in the assembled form. So these are slots, these needs to be punched out needs to be punched out. These are tabs, the tab, and slots. These are slots and these are slots. This needs to be punched out so he does it himself and then he feels relatively comfortable. He tries to make a dry run. Uh, he submits a product name for trademark. He goes to the trademark office so that he can have an identity and he hires an attorney to file and pay an application. And on the manufacturing side, he, he gets those dyes made because it's difficult to make it by hand. So he needs to have dyes. So dyes are metallic components, male and female part, which are joined together. And you put the product within and uh, you can see this dye, uh, the, the stamp sheet. This was a solid sheet when it was put here and uh, it was, uh, she put in this press and they were pressed, you get the, uh, the this design. So he gets it developed and based on that he develops four full-size prototype models. Test on his driveway, there's a bit of snow and it works. He, with some additional design modification, he decides to bring this idea to the buyer of a major retail chain near his New York town and uh, he needs to think about that, how to approach him. So he was happy with the result of his work, he was confident that the invention would revolutionize the snow cleanup industry and it will make a difference. So how to approach a buyer? You have to be articulate, crisp, you have to tell the benefits. So his sales pitch was that it is a great idea which can be assembled in less than 10 minutes with no physical exertion, disassembled in two minutes. The price is $50, withstand four storms and it can help you uh, solve your snow problems. So with this, uh, uh, he prepares his presentation and uh, while he's preparing uh, this, he shares the drawings with his son who is an aspiring businessman and he asks him, gentlemen, what do you think? Am I ready? Am I ready? If the wire says, no, what should I do next? Do you agree there's a business opportunity here? So the participants are requested to look at this video. And this is a few seconds video, 40, 50, 60 seconds. 
and tells about the application. So the question and the assignment for the participant is, so do you think John is ready? And if the buyer says no, no, what should he do? And do you agree there's a business opportunity? So to solve this uh, assignment, uh, I will guide you a bit. Uh, so the assignment is the feasibility scorecard. So you have to fill this form and on the top you have a scale of 0 to 5. 0 means doom. Doom. There is no chance. This is the worst idea. It has no application. 5 is very good, remarkable, very good. It has a great scope. So you have to, you have to, you see, you have to give them a score. Each item has to be given a score. I will give some of them for example. Are industry forces favorable? The technology, the market, the people, are they available? Is it a good time? People are ready to buy. Industry forces, are they available or good? So maybe I stick for. Does this product service address a compelling pain felt by many? Is this pain being felt by many people like John? Yes or no? Zeros on a scale of zero to five. Does this provide a clear customer benefit? This is my scoring. So you have to think in his shoes. Are there potential derivative product service offerings? Like in Farid's case, he was selling videos. Can, and then he started selling derivatives. He started selling stickers and cartoons. He started selling books and laptop covers. He started selling shampoos with, with these cartoons. So is there anything else, potentially anything else he can start making for automobiles and any other product? So you have to think about that. Uh, is there a clear way to make money with this product? Do you think people will be ready and willing to pay? Clear way to make money? Are multiple potential sources of revenue available? Remember the presentation of Kevin. So what did Kevin say? There are many other potential uh, sources of making money. Maybe we can rent out these things. We can maybe give, fran uh, give franchises of this, uh, of this, pro of this manufacturing uh, design and ask people to make, make it. And there, is there any other way? So you have to think about that. Is there a large and growing market? The population is growing. The people are purchasing cars. Do, do, is the market growing? Will it be easy and inexpensive to get a lot of customers? Do you think marketing can be done in a cheap way in social media on those days? Or how do we need to spend money? So you need to put yourself in the shoes in the 80s. Is it likely that intellectual property can be secured? Do you think the legal matters will be resolved? That he can get a, he can get intellectual property document. Will it be easy to manufacture those? Will it be easy to produce in substantial volume? Can he increase the scale? Why, if he gets a bigger order, can, does he have enough money, space, place? Can this business be started with limited funding? Maybe he needs a lot of money. Can this founder raise startup capital? Can he convince people to get a lot of money? Is a strong and complete management team in place? Does he have a good team with him? Does he have the strategic partners with him? Is it e will it be easy to secure strategic partners? So this is something like this. I've given a, a sort of a an, ex an, a an example. Once you have done with the first part, then you write the score here. So is four here, is, is like four here, is three here, so keep on writing. And then the second part of the assignment is, out of these, just select three. Just select three and let, let's assume I selected that. And then you have to do is, you have to choose three to test. You have to design a test. You have to design and come up with questions to decipher and to clarify what this question is this is this relevant or not for example this is does this pro product provide a clear benefit so what will you do to ensure that so one answer will be i will ask some neighbors and friends and i will go for it ask people to come and test so i will get reviews okay so you and the other question is like are there potential sources of revenue available i will what i will do is I will uh, ask people, are they ready to, interested in a franchise? Are they ready to purchase online or to brochures or mail orders? 
are there any sources of revenue i will talk with people and test so these are cer certain questions will arise which will be uh, which needs to be answered to get more detail so with this uh, this feasibility scorecard will help you know how much john is prepared and how much what is the feasibility of this idea and based on that we'll be starting the next uh, part of the case in our next session. Thank you very much.